When we come back, Peggy Fleming in our studios here on Reflections in Gold. Back in a moment. You in a category with Sonia Henney and Dick Button and call you one of the true pioneers in the history of the sport. Do you accept that gladly, proudly, in, in what way, in no way? What well, way? I'm very flattered. I'm very flattered to be included in that group. Uh, Sonia Henney sort of started all the glamour and the sport of figure skating. And, you know, she started all the ice shows. And, you know, I think we've had some real creative people in our past. Uh, Dick Button, I mean, has certainly added a lot to our sport and is still uh, contributing to it and I'm glad to be included in that. What do you think the most significant thing was that, for example, Sonia Henney brought to the sport? What did she do that changed it? Was it just the glamour and Hollywood or was it more to that? No, I mean, she was the one that brought the short skirts to uh, figure skating mm -hmm. so that you could do more physically because your skirt wasn't in the way. And that also added a little more glamour, a little risque. You know, she was really pushing the rules. And she was athletic. For her time in skating, she was doing the most that was done at that time. And what did Dick do? Uh, Dick, you know, was way ahead of his time. I mean, he was doing triple jumps way back in... It was at 48 he won the Olympics and 52, uh, but he did the first triple jump, um, you know, and he has, has really taken figure skating uh, with such passion and he really has, has really fathered it. I mm -hmm. mean, he really protects it and he, um, you know, I think pushes everybody to do their best and think of real interesting things to push skating to be both technically and artistically. You and he both care about the sport a lot, where it's been, where it's going, and, and want to take part in, in where that eventually is going to be. What have you come to agree and disagree upon, the two of you, considering that you care so much? Well, I try to be everybody's mother, <laughs> I think, and he's a little um, rough. Um, he says exactly what's on his mind, which is, which is really good for people to hear, but sometimes it hurts. Mm -hmm. And I always... Um, think of these people that we commentate on, they could be our children. And, you know, I would um, speak to them a little softer than maybe Dick would. So I'm there to protect them <laughs> <laughs> and soften the blow. <laughs> let's, let's talk to you about what you've given to figure skating. What was uh, the, the little girl who was, I guess at 14 you're not really a little girl, but compared to what you are now, you were little. And at the age of 14 winning a, a national title, um, and people start thinking now about Olympics and big things. Do you remember right. that really clearly? Do you remember it being a, a huge burden or something you embraced? Oh, no, I thought it was fun. Um, I won my first national title when I was 15 years old, which um, made me qualify for the Olympic Games in 64 mm -hmm. in Innsbruck. I'd never been to Europe. I never really had a winter coat because coming from California, I didn't need one. Right. <laughs> but, um, you know, to go to the Olympic Games and see other athletes doing other sports besides figure skating, which is, was my world back then, um, I enjoyed myself and enjoyed the whole experience of just participating. I had no dreams of being an Olympic champion until maybe I got home and really had some time to think about it. Did I ever think that that was possible? Your talent obviously speaks for itself with your Olympic medals and nothing could have changed that. But did, did you or anybody think at the time how it was strangely ironic that the plane crash that took out the team in 1961 created all this opportunity for, for someone like you to, to step in? I would have had no idea that that was going to happen. Um, and I didn't feel any real burden of, you know, coming out of, um, you know, that basic uh, blank slate after the crash happened because my coach was killed in it. I was 11 years old when that happened and I didn't have any role models to kind of watch at the skating rink. But it did create an me. opportunity, didn't it? In a, in a weird oh, way. Oh, yes. Yeah. I think when, you know, we haven't had, uh, you know, a U.S. person up there on the podium at a world championship or an Olympics, um, you know, there's something missed. And so I was the first one to come out um, of that crash and, and uh, get on the podium. In a moment, we're going to uh, look at 68 and Grenoble and, and what a great time that was for you in, in that city. What, what kinds of things would you be thinking, do you think, if you were watching that along with us? Uh, for me, back in the Olympic Village in 68, it was um, serious business. I mean, I wanted to keep my health up and I was always watching you know, uh, somebody was sick, I didn't want to be around them. I was very careful about right. what I did. I didn't go to the opening ceremonies because I didn't want to risk getting a cold because our championship started real early on in the games. So I didn't get to have the fun of the Olympics 
as I did in 64. So I was glad that I had that fun experience with no pressure. But the Olympics of 68 was a whole different ball game for me. I went there to win the championship, and I had the pressure of being twice world champion going into the Olympics. It made you nationally famous, and, and around the world, too. And uh, Olympic champions have always been given, you know, great honor. You've met presidents, you've mm -hmm. done endorsements, you obviously broadcasting. What is the most important thing to you, though, that winning that, that medal in Grenoble did? Well, it changed my life, and I'm very grateful for what it has done for my life. It's made it more interesting, and actually now my career has a life of its own. And, but it all relates back to my participation in sports. It's given me wonderful life lessons that I can, you know, prioritize my schedule and my time. And I know about good nutrition. I know about, you know, taking care of myself right. physically without skating. I mean, it's given me just real good values. And my mother always said, never believe your own publicity. That was the best advice I ever had in my well, whole life. Well, you can believe some of yours. Well, a little bit, but I, I've always kept it in perspective. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, looking at the new champions of today, Michelle Kwan, uh, it's surrounded by such a wonderful support system, which I had a good support system around me that kept me real centered. And I think that's the most important thing that an athlete can keep is to keep perspective and to keep centered as to who they are mm -hmm. rather than believe you know what they've done and they're bigger than life you must have had uh, some weird flashbacks when a 14 year old won the national title <laughs> once again uh, recently but as she you look at this cute. as the state of uh, figure skating evolves into what it's going to be and what it is do you think it's in good shape is it being uh, overexposed is well i don't know maybe it might be too early to tell because we've been changing the rules we took out school figures and now um competitive skaters can make money and still compete in the olympic games um i think it maybe is too early uh, to tell if those rule changes were the right thing for our sport. But when I look at it, from my perspective, I'm jealous of the skaters of today because they have so many more opportunities uh, to compete and test themselves mm -hmm. than I did. I only had two or three competitions a year when I was competing, and now they compete in probably 15 to 20 competitions a year and have all kinds of uh, experiences performing in front of a crowd much more than I did and making money. I mean, the money in skating today is wonderful. And I think it's really coming into its own. Peggy, it's great to see you again. Nice to see you too.